Today I'll be presenting to you on advanced persistent threat framework that most hackers follow in order to gain unauthorized access into the systems. For today's presentation, I will first go through review and overview of the methodology of advanced persistent threat. We will then dive deeper into different phases, namely reconnaissance and footprinting, scanning and enumeration, gaining access, maintaining access, and lastly, covering tracks. Before we go straight into today's lecture, we have to know exactly what does Advanced Persistent Threat stands for. What is Advanced Persistent Threat? APT follows a relatively simple framework in every cyber attack towards a targeted organization or group of systems. The attackers are able to penetrate into the target systems through advanced planning and stealthy techniques to have escalated privileges in the victim's environment to ultimately steal data. One of the fundamentals of computer security is the CIA trite, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality is roughly equivalent to privacy, measures undertaken to prevent sensitive information from reaching the wrong people, while making sure that the right people get those information. Access must be restricted to those authorized to view the data in question. It is common, as well, for data to be categorized according to the amount and type of damage that could be done should it fall into unintended hands. More or less stringent measures can then be implemented according to these categories. Integrity refers to the ability to ensure that data is an accurate and unchanged representation of the original secure information. One type of security attacks is to intercept some important data and make changes to it before sending it onto the intended receiver. It is important to ensure that the information concerned is readily accessible to the authorized viewer at all times. Some types of security attack attempt to deny access to the appropriate user, either for the sake of inconveniencing themselves or because there is some secondary effect. For example, by breaking the website for a particular search engine, a rival may become more popular. In an APT, the attack begins by reconnaissance and footprinting. Reconnaissance and footprinting refers to passive information gathering to uncover information of the organization through the web. Scanning and enumeration is an active form of information gathering like port scanning and even ping sweep to get an idea of the network infrastructure in a target organization. Gaining access can refer to the use of exploitation of the vulnerabilities within the systems, or basically to just gain any form of unauthorized access through other means like phishing. After gaining access, the hacker simply does not stop here. The question is, how can we maintain this level of access persistently rather than this attack being a one-off event? Lastly, we have to cover our tracks so that when the administrators or the intrusion detection systems does run through the locks, how can we make sure that we are not under the radar? So this will give us a good overview of the phases a hacker or a group of hackers has to go through to perform an advanced persistent threat. Risk is a function of threats exploiting vulnerabilities to obtain, damage or destroy assets. Thus, threats may exist but if there are no vulnerabilities, then there is little or no risk. Similarly, you can have a vulnerability, but if you have no threat, then you have little or no risk. Asset People, property, and information People may include employees and customers along with other invited persons such as contractors or guests. Property assets consist of both tangible and intangible items that can be assigned a value. Intangible assets include reputation and proprietary information. Information may include databases, software code, critical company records, and many other intangible items. Threat. Anything that can exploit the vulnerability intentionally or accidentally and obtain, damage, or destroy any asset. Vulnerability. Weaknesses or gaps in a security program that can be exploited by threats to gain unauthorized access to an asset. The goal of reconnaissance and footprinting is to identify information of the organization without the use of active actions. From an ethical hacking perspective, 
the focus is upon identifying information about the organization under investigation. Without the organization being aware that the information has been accessed, this can be primarily performed using some of the techniques listed here. Firstly, we can access the organization's website to gain important information. Information like emails, phone numbers, names, job title are all accessible from their corporate website. Scanning and enumeration. It is an active form of information gathering to understand about the landscape of the organization. In this example, we have a hacker scanning for running services in the system. In this case, the hacker found a vulnerable MySQL service in the application server. Active form of information gathering can potentially alert the administrators because of its intrusive behavior. Gaining access. System hacking represents a turning point, which is the point at which the attacker is no longer probing, but is actually attacking the systems and attempting to break in. This is highly susceptible to detection from intrusion detection systems. This is when the attacker sends an exploit with a payload to gain root access into the system. Maintaining access will be the use of root kits to maintain consistent access into the systems. The backdoor being installed is to ensure that the hacker always have ready access to the system in the future. This enables the hacker to continue working with the system in case the system gets patched. This backdoor quickly enables the hacker to gain administrative access and allows the hacker to conduct malicious activities effortlessly. Covering tracks. Ensure that locks are cleared off before administrators actively diagnose the lock files. At the same time, clearing of the entire lock file is not recommended because it can alert administrators. Instead, remove lock files that are specific to the activities you have performed. So in the presentation today, we cover the APT methodology in order to gain unauthorized access into the target organization system. The very first phase of APT is to uncover information passively. The use of reconnaissance and footprinting through the organization's website using online tools to help us conduct passive information gathering. We can uncover many important areas and avenues where we can begin our next phase. The second phase Scanning and enumeration allows us to make use of tools like Nmap and Nessus to identify the system's running and the services version. From there, we can identify the vulnerabilities associated with the version or certain misconfigurations of the system. Once we have found the exploit for the particular service, we're able to run the exploit to gain access into the system. The goal is not an one-off access grant, but to have persistent access whenever the system is running. This is when we go to the maintaining access phase where we can take advantage of root kits to allow us to maintain the level of access we have or to escalate the access. Lastly, the goal is to ensure that our tracks are well covered by removing away locks related to the attack using lock clearing software.